Hi, it's Michelle Nesky, the Posh PA. Now, if you're a student, whether you're a student in PA school, in the thick of it, or just started, or maybe you're on your pre-PA journey, I want to tell you today the number one way that you can improve your performance as a student academically, but also manage the stress and anxiety that comes with a rigorous PA program. A lot of people refer to PA training, especially the classroom portion, the didactic portion, as like drinking from a fire hydrant, right? So how can you balance being able to be sharp and focused and have energy to make it through all of those days of learning and studying and balance that with stress levels and anxiety and how to control those things along the way as well, because these are gonna be tools that you need, not only as a pre-PA, as a PA student, and in your PA career, okay? So before I tell you the number one thing, if you haven't already, smash this subscribe button. I'm here every week dropping new videos to help you get into PA school, become a successful student, and a fulfilled and thriving practicing PA. Okay, so the number one way you can improve your cognitive function your energy and alertness, your sleep quality, your mood, reduce your stress and anxiety and improve your mental health is exercise. I know some of you just went, oh no, <laughs> oh God. And some of you were like, oh yeah, I love exercise, right? So it really just depends what camp you're in, but just know that exercise is the number one way that you can improve your academic performance and preserve your mental health. Now, obviously there are also other aspects of exercise that go into this, like good nutrition and sleep habits and things like that. And I actually have another video on nutrition um, that you can go check out, but it's going to be a combination of these things. And the reason why I'm talking to you about exercise is as busy healthcare providers or as busy students or you know, as, you know, a busy just person in life, the number one thing that tends to go off the schedule or off the plan if life goes awry is exercise and prioritizing your self-care, okay? It is the number one thing people will let go of for something else, okay? And actually, it's a negative feedback loop there, right? Because once you remove exercise, People very often feel anxiety, feel stressed, you know? So it's the number one thing we should keep, but also the number one thing that tends to go to the side or pulled off the to-do list because we have so many commitments and responsibilities. And as a student, you're gonna be having to balance the rigorous course load and the amount of information that's coming to you and how you're gonna study it with your clinicals and really being able to make space for exercise so that you can show up as your best in terms of mental clarity, focus, and energy is so important now and a good tool to have when you get out into practice as it's also one of the ways to prevent feelings of burnout. So why exercise? Well, increasing your heart rate increases blood flow and oxygen to the brain, which in turn it improves your focus and your clarity. Exercise also stimulates neurotransmitters in the brain that are associated with more positive feelings like dopamine and norepinephrine, but they also give you that enhanced focus and concentration that you need to be learning all of these things every day and retraining them, right? So it's really important to squeeze some exercise in during your day. It will actually help your studying. Okay, it will help you to study. You are stimulating those neurotransmitters. You're increasing oxygen and blood flow to the brain and other tissues in the body. You're also impacts neurotrophic factors um, that can help improve um, problem solving abilities and, you know, really being able to take the time to understand what you are learning. And so it's so important um, to be able to have this as part of your day to day routine. And not only that, exercise is a stress reliever, right? You can get out and walk away from things for a little while. You can put your brain somewhere else and just clear it out so that when you come back to it, you are ready to go. And being able to fit this in 
is going to make an impact for you. Now, if you say, Michelle, how do I fit it in? I don't have a gym. I don't, I can't get somewhere. I don't like exercise. Well, like I said before, there are a lot of ways that you can get exercise without going to a gym. Um, you could go for a walk. You can um, go for a hike. You could go for a swim. You could do yoga. Um, there's so many different things that you can do that will help move your body. For, as for me, I work out from home. It's super easy and fast. It's available to me 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and I can fit it in whenever I can. And I will tell you that when I am feeling um, stressed and I am feeling anxious, because let's be real, it, that's going to happen you know, throughout your life. I always lean on exercise because at the end of the time that I exercise, I am feeling like a different person and ready to tackle the world. But most important for you as a student, you want to be able to increase your focus and concentration. You want to get better sleep, right? You want to enhance your cognitive function. You want to increase your energy and alertness. You want to stimulate neurotransmitters in the brain. You want to develop new neural pathways in the brain because you know what? So fascinating is that you can actually still develop new neural pathways in your brain throughout your life. And we have to train ourselves to do that. Just like we train ourselves for medical, you know, knowing all the medicine and all the clinical knowledge, we have to train ourselves for that too, right? But we also have to train our brains <laughs> and we have to train our thoughts and we have to train our bodies so that we can actually have sustained, fulfilled careers as future PAs or as practicing PAs. Now, I could sit here for hours and tell you about physiology of how exercise impacts the brain. But what I feel like you really need to know is that it just takes 20 to 30 minutes, five days a week, and you will see a major shift in your academic performance, in your clinical performance, in your mental health and mood. And so finding a way to schedule it in during your hectic you know, uh, days and weekends is really important for you both now as a student and in the future as a uh, practicing PA. Because I will tell you that as someone who likes to take on a lot of new challenges and do a lot of different things, I really struggled there, you know, for a while with being able to consistently engage in exercise, um, which ultimately led me to feelings of exhaustion and stress and anxiety. And it led me to a place where I did develop, you know, feelings of burnout and provider burnout. And that's why I want to train you to prevent that from happening, okay? So that you can have these healthy, sustainable habits now that are not only going to help you in school, in your academics, um, but also as a future clinician, as a future PA, and in your personal life, because all of these things work together. So let me know in the comments if you exercise. I also have a freebie in there that you can check out. But I think it's really important to share not only my story and, and why I think exercise is important, but also the data behind it and the physiology of the brain to know that it's really helping you to move forward. Obviously, um, creating a, um, a healthy, sustainable lifestyle plan now as a student that you can carry on into the future, into your career, only has benefits that you could not imagine. If you need help doing that, you can also let me know down in the comments. I'm happy to help you. All right, I'll see you guys next time.